Okay. All right. Let's get to it, folks. It's Monday, 7 a.m., December 23rd. I'm going to do a live BTC session for my Advantage members. Today's topic will contain, obviously, the small to high time frame uh, Bitcoin analysis. We'll do a general market analysis, too, of uh, crypto. Uh, I'll also be talking about the longs and short positioning. I'll also be talking about why it pays to be a trader on the right side of the trend and not try to counter trade or try to catch the top uh, when you don't really know where the top is, especially if there's no significant resistance anywhere near you. Okay. I'll also be covering um, CME gaps. And then in this suggestions area, I know there's a couple of different um, suggestions. I'll cover these as well. Okay. So I think those topics enough should give you a good idea of what I think about the market uh, going into um, you know Christmas time and maybe even the coming week. Okay. All right. So first things first. Okay. Um, let's get to the BTC analysis. Right. I want to show you guys right here um, that you've now had essentially uh, three opportunities to long. Okay. First one was when I entered a long position right here um, for Bitcoin. Uh, this was last Wednesday. So uh, yeah, five or four days ago or something, right? Entered around 68.75. What I was doing was, um, let me show you guys exactly where I was, okay? So what I kept doing was in this area right here, down here, this little microstructure right here, I kept trying to short this thing while I was trying to come up here, okay? And once I got stopped out up in this area, I said, okay, if this structure right here starts consolidating and breaks, I'm getting into longs, okay? You have to realize as a trader, at what point will you be wrong in the direction of a trade? So for example, when I was shorting this thing as it was going up, what I was really hoping for was this resistance area right here to hold, okay? And if it didn't hold, okay, if it's going to sort of break up past it, is it going to just collapse right back under? So I was hoping for you know this line right here to hold the price down and send it back down, or even if it did break, right, the consolidation above it would be very short and fleeting and it would actually start breaking down neither of which happened okay so my first invalidation was that this area right here this little microstructure right here broke up consolidated above this line right here and then started to break up again that was my first easy um, opportunity at a long it's not because i had to think really hard if the market is going to go higher it's rather that the technicals were so simple that all I had to do was, you know, once you get burnt on a short while going up, stop trying to catch the knife on more shorts and thinking that you're going to catch the top, okay? Just take the opposite side of the trade and say, okay, it's very possible that I could be wrong, okay? And by the way, this is exactly where a lot of people um, cannot make money. They cannot fathom, they cannot imagine them being wrong that this, you know, uh, this price is now heading up in a different direction, okay? Because their bias is so heavily pointed towards one direction that they just cannot think of the market any other way. And this is, you know, personally, in my opinion, this is where our community or myself, you know, um, we, we thrive, okay? Which is that I don't give a shit which way the market goes. Give me some invalidation levels that price breaks, and then let me just take the other side of the trade. Okay. So like I said, your first, you know, area or your first marker was realizing that this lower high right here. So once you saw this period of consolidation breakdown, right, right there, retest right here and then sell off. Once you saw that sort of break with this candle and then come consolidate right here, this was your first indication that, Hey, the market might be turning around. It might be time to go long. Okay. Your second um, uh, area that I told you that you can potentially think about going along was, I mean, we were chatting, you know, through the chat. Um, and I said that if you didn't catch this area where I went long, 
it's possible that you could get in on this candle right here because more than likely this thing is going to go higher. Okay, this is based on a higher time frame analysis, like the one and four hour, which I'll show you guys again. Okay, so if we go to the four hour, right, I said, um, hey, you know, if you guys didn't get into this candle right here, which is where I got in, the next candle looks pretty sharp. This might be the candle you might want to get into. Why? Because we are starting to break this last four hour consolidation before the drop off. So this is the last point of breakdown right here before this big red candle right here, right? So that was your second opportunity. Your third opportunity was when this three day consolidation right here happened. And I said, I still do believe that we're going to aim higher, okay? And guess what we did? After three days, boring everyone to death, having people short here thinking that, you know, they're all that, the price eventually took off further. The reason people are sort of being proven wrong on this please give me a yes or no um sound stopped Audio is back. Okay, it's back. Everything is good? Okay. All right, perfect. All right, sorry about that. I don't know what was going on. So anyway, the, the next um, area for consolidation that you guys saw, right? Sorry, okay. So basically what I was saying was you had two opportunities up in this market movement right here to long, right? Then I gave you guys another opportunity. I said, hey guys, this looks like consolidation to me. Okay, just in case you're wrong, you know, maybe place your stops like down here or maybe even below 6,800 or so, right? Just in case, you know, I'm wrong, right? Three days of consolidation led to more expansion to the upside, right? Price just really just took off, you know, um, from 7,150 all the way to about $7,600. So about a good $450, $500 move right there, okay? Now what we're seeing is again, this is something that I mentioned before I went to bed last night, right? I said, hey, if we start seeing consolidation in this area right here, especially above this weekly open, this is another opportunity that you get for potential longs that we're now going to aim for the high of this range right here, okay? Now I'm not saying just because I'm long, I'm bullish and I'm going to start, you know, I'm aiming for a new bull market for 9,000 or 10,000. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that I need to take things one step at a time. And once I saw this break, I don't know how much higher the prices are going to go, but I'm going to ride this thing up until I see a significant resistance level, hold the price down and torpedo it down. And where is that significant level? Well, it's the range high, right? This is the range high, deviation above, deviation above, and then sell off, right? You know, let's just say from inside this bar right here. So around 21st, 22nd of November, Today is now 23rd of November. That's a whole month that we've got, okay? So now that we've got one whole month of consolidation, it only makes sense to me that we're going to, first of all, right, um, get to the high of this area right here and take out the stops residing above these highs right here, okay? Because remember, there's a lot of short uh, stops sitting right above this area. Okay. How do I know that? Because whether you were shorting from here, whether you were shorting from here or anywhere down here, first of all, I mean, if you're shorting from down here or even say anything below this area right here, you are at some pretty significant losses um, in your short position. Okay. So your last um, hope or resort is that this key high right here holds, okay? And that it sends price back down if you are a short position holder. Now, if I was a bull and I had a decent amount of demand to push the market up, 
I would want to take out these stops because there is a ton of liquidity trapped, okay? So remember, like I said, all right, when you have a short position on one side, there is an equal long position on the other and vice versa. So if there are short positions on up here, right, their stops essentially mean that you are going to uh, have an opposite long position on the other. So when these people right here get stopped out, what they're really doing is they call it short covering, meaning that they have to rebuy back their short with a coordinating long, right? Does that make sense? So if they're coordinating and buying a, a, a um, long on the other side to close out their short right here, okay, that means they can potentially accelerate the price even higher. Or what they might do is they might actually go long because they're in heavy losses and they might think that, hey, this thing might go higher and higher once this thing stops me out. So then this further not only torches the shorts up in this area right here, right? But then it starts driving up prices even higher. So you can see why I've been bullish, right? Um, since down here, or rather since up here, okay? Um, my thing said connection unstable again. Uh, okay, sorry about that, folks. I don't know what's going on. Um, is it back now? Is the audio back? Let me know, back now, okay. Yeah, I apologize, I really don't know what's going on. Um, so anyway, let me do something real quick, actually. I'm, I think I know what's going on. Um, okay. Okay, let's try this out, okay? So, okay, so now you understand why potentially, you know, shorts can be squeezed out. And I fully believe, not fully, but rather I'm fairly confident that price can make it at least up here, right, to about $7,800, $7,900. Um, it could push higher, but at the very least, I'm definitely going to take, you know, a good amount of profit between $7,800 and $7,900, okay? Because I do believe that this area right here is going to pose a lot of resistance, but I also think that there's going to be enough bullish pressure in this area right here to take out some stops, okay? All right. Uh, remember, like I said, um, I did believe that price was going to consolidate here and potentially push higher. Uh, it is consolidating and holding above the weekly open, which is a key area that price should hold anyway, okay? Um, even on the one hour, I mean, you can make the argument that this is probably shaping up to be a you know consolidation period right here. Uh, maybe another half a day or a day and we might push off again, okay? If you think I'm wrong, right? Let's just say I'm wrong. The best place for you to short anyway is probably up here. Shorting right here, you're essentially hoping to get stopped out on upward movement. Even if I'm wrong, right, I guess the place I would be wrong is price moves up just a trick, uh, just a little bit right here in this area and then dumps. So why would you want to be in a um, short position right here when you can get one higher, potentially here or here, right? So you can see how longs, um, going long in this particular area, it's probably the easiest payoff, okay? Um, uh, now, another reason why I said I was long, I mean, you can go read about this in the Bitcoin analysis section or even advantage announcements, right? I, I made my uh, case pretty clear, um, you know, given the fact that uh, majority of people, I think, were aggressively shorting this up, upward movement, you know, I realize that these people are just going to get torched because the, the herd mindset of, you know, this, this whole sort of trend, you know, being so easy to short every bounce, right? I mean, every time you can see right here, you know, price moves up, it gets shorted, you know, you make money. Price moves up, gets shorted, you make money. Consolidates, dumps down over here, price moves up and then dumps down, you make money came back all the way up here, right? 
and you made more money if you shorted the top, right? So the point is that when price sort of hit this key low right here, and then it took out that low right here, there was a lot of liquidity grabbed in this area. Because remember, whoever went long right here, okay, had their stops definitely residing down here in this area. And once you take out these stops from this low, you have basically torched everyone who was long from here all the way up, okay? And those people, you just handed over, I mean, they just handed over their BTC to whoever was buying down here. And remember, we know there was someone big buying down here because we saw, remember this is November 24th low, right? See that right there? Now pay attention, all right? So if someone was buying the longs right from the get-go, November 23rd, right there, all the way. So this person, this entity, whoever this person is, has no interest in stopping, you know, in the middle of what was potentially one of the larger short squeezes, right? Because this person realized that everyone is so conditioned to short. I've also, I as in the BTC USD uh, long person, collected a ton of liquidity. So he probably has a majority of the longs in the market anyway, right? So all he has to do is now, if he has deep pockets, he or she has deep pockets, you just keep driving up the price, driving up the price, and sooner or later, everyone who shorted all the way over here from top down is going to be underwater in their shorts as price keeps moving up and up and up, okay? And this person, who bought these longs right here and bought everyone stops right here is just going to make money as the price moves up and as he drives prices up higher um, this person is going to make even more money because the shorts are being squeezed out and forced to close their positions which again means that they're going to push the prices higher as shorts close down their positions okay all right that was a long spiel um, Okay, so first, let me go back to the suggestions before I forget, all right? Can you set, uh, shed some light on short squeezes are engineered? So I think I kind of explained this, you know, um, how do whales and exchanges do this? It's not that it's manipulation, folks. It's that you just have to pay attention to the structure, okay? So one big um, gripe that I have with people is that just because the price is not favorable to them, they think everything is manipulation. Okay, that's not the case, all right? Manipulation is, you know, inorganic, um, odd price movement that you just see kind of spike out of nowhere, okay? Now, this to me, when you ranged in this area like this, and then you took out this low, right? This is a lot of liquidity grab, and there's, so, there's really nothing wrong with the price going up from here, at least in my opinion. And it's, I would say it's probably the easiest way to sort of, you know, see that once you grab a lot of liquidity, you basically collected a lot of the longs down here, and all you gotta do is now drive up prices, okay? That is not, in my opinion, manipulation. That's just someone bigger in the market pushing his weight around because he or she has collected enough liquidity, and there's not much supply left anyway. This person now has the ability to essentially drive up the market, and it's not, you know, his or her fault that you are too dumb to realize that the market is going to keep moving up. And as people keep shorting right here or right here or right here or right here, all through this thing, this person is just torching these longs and he's just collecting more and more money, right? So, you know, again, I don't mean to be insulting, but shorting right here is just not smart. And frankly, it's kind of dumb. You know, because if you were really wanting to short, what you should be waiting for is wait for this rejection right here, or at least wait for confirmation that a top has been put in and then price is going to start breaking down. But you can't see that yet, can you, right? So why would you start aiming for lottery tickets on shorts? Why would you start being able to catch knives on um, price action that's moving in the opposite direction for the last, you know, four or five days, right? So anyway, um, that's short, sort of my spiel, right? Um, 
I'm not saying it's only one person or entity. I mean, I'm just giving you an example. I just, uh, you know, this, this question goes along with the, uh, you know, that Joe 007 guy or whatever on Twitter. I personally, you know, don't believe that it's one person collecting longs. I really don't think that's how uh, markets work. Um, I think this person is benefiting off this, which is fine. But I don't believe that this person has, you know, $50, $100 million uh, vested in one direction of the position. That would be really dumb. And it's just not good risk management. And also, if you're really smart and you have sort of traded in these markets for a long time, you know, one thing you never ever do is show what you're doing, which is that show which direction you're trading in the market. Because remember, even if you're someone with a lot of money, there's someone always with more money. Okay. And so the person with more money is going to see your foolish uh, visibility of your position. And he's just going to wait and torch you in the other direction when you're most vulnerable. Okay. Or, you know, if that person is sort of waiting for a particular area to long or short, say the person who's long right now, you know, someone with even more money could exploit that person and, you know, basically get even more money out of them. So you can see why I'm not really that big of a believer that this Joe person or there's only one person sitting on Bitfinex collecting longs. I think that's just major, you know, BS. Um, you know, for someone who's uh, been in this market for 10 or 11 years, I can honestly tell you that, uh, you know, trading is like playing poker. Okay. You just don't give up your position and you don't let people know what you have stored in your cards. Um, you know, Sometimes it could be a bluff. Sometimes you could be a major player. It doesn't matter, but you just don't tell people openly and announce it publicly on Twitter that, Hey, I'm long. So this whole notion about, you know, this Joe person uh, being the sole person that's long, or you know, this person is um, the one person who has a ton of long positions. I don't really buy it to be honest. Um, you know, and who cares if it is one person, just watch the market. The great thing about technicals is that you get to see everything that's happening in the market on this chart right here. You also get to see that when key areas like this area, when key lows are taken out and then key, you know, swing lower highs are taken out, it's pretty easy to sort of jump out into the other direction and just say, okay, if I'm wrong and I keep you know, I got torched on my short right here. Let me just take the opposite side of the trade and see if this thing is going to yield me more profit, which so far it has, right? So clearly, I mean, at least in our community and the Advantage membership, we're doing something right, okay? So, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, all right, so I think I answered this question right here. Um, by the way, would it make sense of exchanges to use BTC stored by their legitimate customers and their storage for manipulations? Um, well, more often than not, brokers and exchanges typically do trade on the exchanges. And sometimes exchanges definitely do trade against their customer base. Because remember that if there's one person who knows exactly which position, um, which direction their customers are uh, you know, more uh, focused on or which structurally, which direction, you know, their customers believe price is going to go based on um, open interest or based on where stops are or how many 25 X longs or 10 X shorts or hundred X longs are focused. It's the exchange that knows. So it makes kind of, you know, sense that the exchange itself will at times, um, trade against their customer base. And this has actually been the case for exchanges like Bitfinex. I personally don't believe this is the case with Bybit. Uh, also because Bybit is kind of a smaller exchange. Um, so, you know, I think also there's some bigger players in the market, even on Bitfinex. And given the fact that there's now CME futures and backed the, the kind of, you know, um, shenanigans that used to happen back in 2017 or even early 2018 
where Bitfinex used to be the market that pushes price around, you know, the Bitfinex whales, not really the case anymore because I believe CME backed um, by bit, you know, all these bigger exchanges and um, brokers that are coming up do not allow that kind of garbage because they are susceptible to bit, BitMEX's garbage too, right? So that means that they're not going to allow uh, their positions to be pushed underwater so fast, okay? So def their defense for positions is probably a significant amount of money, okay? So the BitMEX whales are, you know, kind of even smaller whales compared to the, you know, futures traders that come into the uh, market from the CME or the backed area, okay? All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, could you explain how you interpret last week's candle close? Okay, so first, um, let's go to the daily, right? So I said on the daily that one of the reasons why I became um, sort of uh, immediate term or short term bullish is because number one, this thousand dollar candle right here, okay, engulfed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days of you know previous movement in this one day right here, okay? That's number one. Number two, right? These three days of consolidation were all inside bars and for the most part, a bull flag, okay? So, you know, again, gave me more confidence that this thing is looking bullish. Third reason why I was bullish um, given yesterday, right? The weekly and the daily close is because if you look at this local descending trend line right here, notice that this candle right here closed above it, okay? Wasn't a full daily close, daily open and close above it, but it was enough to give you an idea that, hey, things are looking bullish and things look like they're going to potentially turn around and aim for higher prices. And that doesn't mean that we're going to break this descending trend line right here that we've held for almost six months or so, okay? I still do believe that, you know, our price can be capped at the highest around $8,300, all right? Yeah, it might shoot up maybe a hundred bucks higher or 200 bucks higher. I cannot predict, you know, these kinds of wicks. I'm saying for the most part that price should follow this, you know, um, descending trend line right here. Okay. And if it doesn't, then I will definitely go along. Then I know that, okay, you know what? Maybe the local bottom right here was the bottom for 2019. And once we start breaking above this area, then I'll go along, right? Like I said before, you know, for me to consider going um, long uh, for the longer term picture, um, I would at least want to see price close above this, you know, 9,000, 900, 10,000 area right here on a daily. Okay, we're pretty far from that. But does it matter to me if we sort of, you know, keep going up from here? No, not really. I'm already positioned long anyway, right? But I'm going to take profit near key resistance levels, whether it's $7,900 right here above this swing high, or whether it's you know $8,300, $8,400 right here, which is this descending trend line, okay? Um, okay, so anyway, uh, so, so to answer that question, daily perspective, you can see locally why the bottom, you know, I think was put in, right? Locally, doesn't mean this has to be the start of a new bull trend, it just means Locally, we have more potential upside. Now let's take a look at the weekly, okay? So here's the weekly close right here. I mean, this was the perfect sweep of the lows, uh, right? like I said. You also have this area right here, okay? Which was previous support, support, and it now became resistance. So it only makes sense that even this weekly candle that we're on right now will probably hit this area as resistance and potentially come down again, right? If we're truly supposed to be bullish on a weekly time frame, let a full weekly candle close above this area, come down to test it as support down here around 8,000, 7,900, and then push off, okay? Chances are it will happen, okay? So just wait, all right? Just wait and be patient if you're waiting from a weekly time frame perspective. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen in the coming week or so. Um, I think we might poke up right here around 7,900, 8,000 and then get pushed back down, um, you know, leading to these kinds of wicks right here. Um, but again, if I'm wrong, right? Always think of how many ways you could be wrong. 
right? If I'm wrong, price could push up here, make it all the way to, I don't know, 8,500, 9,000 even, but then watch it come test this area of support and then push off, okay? That is your first indication that, all right, looks like price is coming back to this same area that was support, support, resistance, breaks up, comes test it as support, and now it's ready for potentially a new bull run, okay? Until then, you know, this is a good close for, you know, more local upside. It doesn't mean we're starting a bull market, okay? So now that I've sort of cleared up on different time frames, why I'm bullish on certain time frames and still bearish on others, you know, you can see that nothing has shifted in my mindset. Just because I'm long in a position doesn't mean I'm aiming for 10,000 or 12,000, okay? I will take it one step at a time, each level of resistance at a time, all right? I have enough time, enough patience in the world to do that. I'm not looking um, you know, to, to catch knives on shorts by just hoping that this is the top and now we're, we have to go down, okay? I hope that makes sense. All right, now another thing that obviously I need to talk about is uh, the CME gap, okay? Um, um, bearing the previous point, in, oh yeah, actually, hang on. Could you please explain the inflows of capital at the moment? I was under the impression that not much is coming in. I think, I mean, it, it's hard to sort of ignore, you know, not much is coming in when you sort of look at the volume that came in right here, pretty decent size volume right here, not the highest, okay, but good size enough, right? Remember that you will not see significant amount of volume right at the very bottoms. So you'll see it start developing over time, okay? Now, a perfect example of that is, you know, if you... Let me see if I can find the uh, Coinbase chart, okay? So if we start looking at the volume, okay, right around this area, okay, this was like the bottom right there, okay? Notice that the volume was kind of high right here, and then, you know, it sort of died down uh, in this area for like two or three months, and then once you saw the breakout, this is where you saw a sudden surge in volume right there. It wasn't until almost a thousand dollars or actually two thousand dollars from this low that you saw a sudden surge in volume right because remember that you know um if you are uh, if you're a big player in the market your positions are not being market bought or anything in this area these are all small passive iceberg orders that keep getting filled over and over and by the way the term iceberg order, um, I don't know if you guys know what that means, but say for example, you know, there's a whale looking to buy um, BTC between the range of, actually, let's just say one price point, okay? Let's just say the price point was right here, okay? Or actually, let's just say it was right around this area right here, around $3,500, $3,600, okay? So when price comes to this area, what really happens is this whale right here, he sets an iceberg order, which is one large order that looks like, you know, it's a four or 500 BTC order. It gets filled, but then as soon as it gets filled, another one pops up, which is another 500 BTC order. When that one gets filled, another one pops up, and then another one, and then another one, okay? These are called iceberg orders because it's just a bot or a professional waiting to get filled at a particular level. So every time price comes down to this level, he or she understands that, hey, this is a good price for me to pay for BTC. So I'm just going to have a 4,000 BTC order. And every time price comes to this level, let me get my orders filled. Okay. So this is probably one large entity or, you know, potentially numerous people that understand that this is maybe a good level to get your orders filled and massive, you know, amount of BTC can be collected at this level because people are still, I don't know, aggressively shorting or selling. And all I have to do as a whale is keep my orders, my iceberg orders there and keep getting filled. Okay. Those are called iceberg orders. Now, um, again, so I explained you the volume, right? Um, you can see when this bottom right here was created, volume was pretty low until this breakout right here, which is this thousand or not thousand, but I guess 
uh, yeah, I guess about a thousand dollar candle that popped up right here. That's where you start, started seeing a surge in volume. And then once it consolidated again right here, boom, more volume. Consolidated again, boom, more volume, okay? So it's not necessary that you have to see significant volume come in right here. You may see it over the coming months or so, okay? If this is truly the bottom. And you will probably see it, all right? Um, once you start seeing the breakout outside this trend line, because remember, there's probably a lot of people watching this trend line like you and I are, okay? Or they're probably watching, um, you know, a 200 moving average, which is right up here, $93, $9,400, which is really the area that, you know, price was being held down right here, right here, and right here. So if we get past this 200 moving average around 9,300 bucks or so, wherever it is, you might see more volume come in. So you could see why, you know, to me, um, the argument about, you know, not a lot of uh, inflows of capital coming in uh, doesn't really stand up as a good argument because you're not going to see significant volume come in. You might start seeing it as prices appreciate. And remember that most people will not know that the bottom was put in till we're in, you know, 20% or 40% into the middle of the next bull run. Okay. I don't even know if this is the bottom, but I can at least say that I don't think it's the bottom because we haven't broken out of key resistance levels like this trend line right here. We might, right? We might over the next coming, you know, week or two or a couple of weeks, right? We might, but even then I'm not going to be someone who professes that I knew this was the bottom. I'll just say that, Hey, I was someone who longed right here and I sold right here. And if this thing breaks out out here, I might re long out there, you know? So that's kind of the thing, right? I mean, still sort of in a deeper downtrend, nothing has really changed. Um, once we get outside this downtrend, then we can start talking, okay? All right, well, finally, let's talk about the C CME gap, okay? All right, so clearly, you know, the CME gap kind of become like a meme in this market. Um, I explained why the CME gaps are created the way they are last time. I'll go over it briefly, uh, briefly right now. Remember, like I said, um, gaps are created because markets like the futures markets are not open 24 seven, okay? Uh, like the BTC leverage or um, perpetual futures markets are, um, or the uh, spot markets of Bitcoin, right? So when the Bitcoin futures markets are not open 24 seven, obviously there's going to be movements that happen in the market when the markets of the futures markets are closed, right? So when those movements happen, there is a gap that is created, okay? Now remember that, for example, um, this movement right here, when this happened, this happened over a weekend, right? When this movement happened, okay, price of BTC appreciated really fast, really high, and the people who were potentially you know, uh, in the CME positions, potentially that might have been short right here, okay, in this area, are now underwater because the price is all the way up here, okay? So what they would do, what's probably in their favor to do, is pressure the market down, whether it's utilizing hedges on BitMEX, or maybe they have other traders um, who have a ton of money who are their compadres or you know, they, they just have, you know, hedges um, with other algorithms on BitMEX to pressure the market down to be able to close out their position due to this gap right here, right? And once you close out this position with this big wick, then you let the market do its thing and go whichever direction it's supposed to go, okay? Same thing right here, all right? Um, gap right there gets filled in, you know, maybe three or four days later, okay? Now, the problem that I have with people is that, number one, they don't really understand the concept of gaps and why they happen. Number two, that just because a gap has happened, it doesn't mean, first of all, that it has to get filled anytime soon, okay? I mean, you know, I can give you the perfect example of this gap sitting right up here. It's been waiting since, you know, uh, August. It's at 11,900. You could see that has not gotten filled, okay? Um, Another example is way down here, right? Uh, where was it? Like somewhere down here, there was another gap or something. Yeah, like right here, okay? 
there's a gap right here that's been around since February 2019. Sorry, if you guys can't see that. Um, one second, let me delete this. You can see that right there, right? Gap way right there around February 2019. That one hasn't gotten filled, okay? So what do you make of that, right? So the point is that, you know, um, just because a gap is there, number one, doesn't mean it has to get filled. Now, you can make the argument that yes, there have been more times that the gap has been filled than not, okay? But the time that um, it takes to get filled greatly varies, okay? So for example, this gap right here was created um, 25th October. It got filled 5th of November with this wick down. So it took 10 days. 10 days of price being in the other direction, okay? So remember that when you are looking for gaps, and if you think that they're going to get filled, you have to be able to come terms with the fact that you might have to suffer for 10, 15 days, or you might have to suffer for you know this garbage right here, where it still hasn't gotten filled. So don't trade off gaps blindly, okay? I think that's kind of foolish, right? Just keep into mind that the overall macro structure of the market, where exactly price is in terms of trend, and once price starts heading into the other direction, then you can start looking at potential areas where there is a gap that price could fill in that gap, okay? Don't just blindly trade the market just because there is a gap, okay? Because chances are you might be in a losing position for days, and as far as I know, most people don't have that kind of patience to wait in a bleeding position for 5, 10, 15 days until that gap gets filled, okay? So you might be in the wrong side of the trade hoping that gap gets filled, and then you pretty much get liquidated or sell at a loss because you don't have the cojones to hold to uh, hold on to a, to a losing position for, you know, a week or two. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Um, why do you say it's only, okay. I already answered this question. Okay. So I think I'm done with these suggestions questions. Um, you know, I think you guys, uh, for the most part, got a decent amount of analysis out of this. Um, obviously, you know, number two, uh, one of the other sort of things that I'm looking at is the December monthly open. Like I said, monthly opens are key areas that prices sort of struggle to, um, you know, get over or get past um, whether it's support or resistance at certain points. Okay. You know, you can take a look at this example of the October monthly open around $8,300. You could see it was resistance right there. Resistance closed above it, but then boom, came back under it. Resistance right there broke above it, sat on support again, came back under it, hit that same area as resistance, boom, sold off. So you can see all those times the monthly open was almost used as a pivot in this area, okay? Same with uh, November. November opened right here, okay? So support right there, multiple times, support. Once it broke down, used that same area as resistance, sold off, okay? Same thing with the December monthly open. You can see December open right around here. Price has not closed above on a daily candle in December above the monthly open. It's finally getting to that point, okay? So if you want, you can definitely take profits on your longs here, all right? Doesn't mean you have to short, but you could definitely take profits on your longs right here, okay? Because if we're saying that, okay, well, we haven't seen a daily close above the monthly open right here, it's very possible that we don't see another one today itself. If we do, might be kind of a good thing, okay? Um, let's see here. All right, um, I think I'm pretty much done answering questions, folks. Uh, uh, no, I meant, can exchanges use a BTC that's stored by them for customers who don't use it? No, they cannot. Um, positive vector, no, they absolutely cannot use your BTC to um, uh, take on different positions. They, and they absolutely cannot. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, um, let me see if there's anything else I wanna talk about. I talked about the CME gap. Um, you talked about the weekly chart. I talked about a potential local bottom you know, the monthly open rejection. I mean, these are all the key things that I look for anyway, right? So you kind of understand, it, you know, everything that I'm looking at. 
Um, you also understand sort of the smaller and higher time frame analysis all the way down from the 30 minute uh, to the one hour, four hour, and then almost as high as the daily and the weekly, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, even this area right here, you can see perfect retest of this resistance right there. Now it's ready to kind of keep on moving up. Okay, if we kind of get rejected at a double top, say for example, we form a top right here and another top, and then we start breaking below this area, then we might have put in a local top. It's very possible, okay? But we're not anywhere near that, right? So, I mean, it pays off to be bullish right now or being long, okay? Um, let's see here. Four hour, I already talked about weekly open right there. You know, it's being held up. You can see price refuses to sort of close below that weekly open. So pretty good sign. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, lastly, I just want to talk about, you know, I see a lot of people sort of trading on smaller time frames without understanding the context of price action. And because, you know, you are not someone who's spent as much time as I have, or I do on a daily basis of understanding, you know, market structure or psychology. And so when I'm explaining these things to you and you keep sort of trading on even smaller time frames than I do, or you keep sort of trying to go in the opposite direction of my position, it just goes to show that you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. Now there are very high possibilities that I could be wrong and I'm wrong many times. Okay. I will be wrong many times in life. But the thing is, you know, if you're paying for the service to be in the advantage membership, at least pay attention to the reason why I'm going long or short instead of actively trying to counter trade me and hope that, you know, Hey, maybe, you know, I'm all might be wrong and I might catch a lottery ticket of him being wrong and price, you know, dumps down really fast. Okay. So I'm not saying that, you know, listen to me all the time. I'm just saying that at least pay attention to what I'm saying in this, you know, Bitcoin analysis channel. I mean, I spend so much time giving you guys all this analysis. If you just read it carefully and you understand exactly what I'm trying to say, you know, you would have actually been well positioned for this long right here, you know, from the uh, $6,800 area. And you would be sitting kind of good even now. I mean, that's a, you know, almost a thousand dollar move that you've caught. Okay. So, you know, just pay attention to the things that I say in the analysis right there. Um, you know, everything that I'm doing, it's for you guys, right? I mean, you employ me, you know, can you do a zoom class on Wyckoff analysis? I can, but Wyckoff is so complicated. It'll take me like, you know, hours potentially, but I, I can try at some point. Okay. I could do a Wyckoff analysis um, Zoom class at some point. Um, but anyway, point is just pay attention to my analysis and also just pay attention to what's happening in the market. You know, um, like I've said before, I mean, you should be okay with understanding, you know, that you will never always be uh, a trader that will definitely make uh, good trades in the market and keep winning money consistently for a long period of time. It took me almost seven ish years to do that. Okay. Um, and I did that in multiple markets, you know, I did that in commodities, stocks and Forex and in 2016, when I started trading crypto, I wasn't profitable till, you know, maybe consistently early 2017 or mid 2017, you know? So the point is that there's always a learning curve to everything. And so don't get bogged down keep learning, keep pushing yourself to, you know, keep being curious in this market. Um, even if you lose money on trades, at least try to not lose a significant amount of money where you were aiming for lottery tickets. And because you got liquidated and wrecked, now you don't have money to play into another position tomorrow or the day after or next week or next month. Right? So always manage your risk, play stops properly and take profit often. Okay. You know, no one ever lost money by taking profit. You know, you guys know, I always say that, right. And it's very true. Um, you know, so be careful in this market, play your bets properly. Okay, folks. Um, how much do you recommend learning order flow? 
I do not rely on order flow analysis that heavily. I mean, when have you guys ever seen me, you know, spend hours on order flow? I mean, watch the price action. This is everything that you need to know. I'm not saying that order flow is not useful, by the way. I'm saying that as a trader, you know, there's many skills um, that are out there that you may not get to master or even understand. You know, there's hundreds of indicators, um, tons of different techniques that people trade by. You know, some people, I don't know if you know this, some people only trade horizontals, meaning they only trade, you know, ranges like this or key levels like this being broken or like this being broken. They never follow trend lines like this, these diagonals. Okay, these are called diagonal trend lines. They never have trend lines like this. Some people don't um, trade patterns like this. And some people do trade patterns like this, okay? Some people rely heavily on indicators like the RSI or the MACD and the Stoke RSI. Some people don't. So you can see that there are, you know, different techniques for different traders, whatever works for you. So if you are someone who wants to understand order flow analysis, go for it. I personally don't spend that much time in it because I make enough money just being a consistent trader by just raw price action and the technicals that I show you guys every single day, right? And, you know, I mean, I'm a fairly profitable trader without order flow. So how much better can it really be if I'm already profitable without it? Yeah, it might give me, you know, some edge here and there, but I don't personally see the point of it right now. If someday I feel like my own technique needs improving upon, or I feel like I'm not profitable anymore, yeah, I might learn order flow analysis, who knows, right? So anyway, um, I think I'm gonna wrap up the session and uh, call it a day. It looks like we're seeing some movement in BTC. Looks like a quick spike down, it seems. Um, but yeah, um, that's it, I think. So you guys have a wonderful time, folks. And um, yeah, I will talk to y'all soon. Trend lines, et cetera, where's a good place to start learning about pivots? Uh, you could go to the research, uh, resources section in our community, um, Crypto Life. Go check that out, okay? Um, that's pretty much it. I will do more sessions, you know, on education and stuff later. But till then, you know, just, uh, just watch my videos, watch my analysis, read my work. And um, that's it. All right. Take care. I hope you guys found this session useful, okay? All right. Cheers, folks.